This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this uh, lecture is on accounting conventions and policies. Uh, and there's quite a few terms written down in this chapter. So um, uh, let me run through it and briefly explain what each of them mean. It's not a calculation problem, but you are expected to be aware of uh, these conventions and policies, um, which are the basis on which we prepare uh, financial statements. On the first page, you've got what we call the fundamental uh, accounting concepts, which are mentioned in accounting standard number one, that whenever an accountant, a qualified accountant, is preparing financial statements, um, we assume always they're expected to follow these four, what we call, concepts. Uh, the first one is fair presentation. And well, what I've written there doesn't exactly say much. Financial statements should be fairly presented. What we really mean is they should be showing an honest, the, an honest position of the uh, business. Um, so we don't try and make the profit look better than it actually is, for example. You know, if you're the accountant, um, the managing director, the chief executive officer, they may have promised the bank, they've lent us money, they've promised the bank that we'll make big profits this year. And so they might be pressuring, pressurising you as accountant, try and make the profits look good. You know, how can you make the profits look good? And, ooh, charge less depreciation this year or something like that. Well, no, we should, as accountant, you should present things fairly. Show the true profit, not try and make it look better or worse than it actually is. Now the next one, going concern. We prepare the accounts assuming it will continue in business. I mean just one example of where that's relevant. You know that uh, inventories we should value at the lower of cost and net realizable value. And most of the time the lower will be cost, because usually we are selling the goods at a profit. Uh, if we, the business was about to close down, though, you know, full well if a business is closing down, very often they sell all their inventories off cheap. The realisable value might be lower than cost. Well, we assume we're not going to close down, we are going to stay in business, and therefore usually forget damaged goods and things, usually the, the selling price will be higher than the cost, we value at cost. Uh, accruals, something we've been dealing with uh, chapter after chapter, uh, that our expenses, we don't show the cash actually paid during the year, we show the true expense for the year. That um, uh, if we've not paid enough, we accrue. If we've paid too much, we have a prepayment. But we want to show the cost of using the telephone for the year, which may not be the same as the cash actually paid this year. And finally, consistency. Consistency it means the same. So items should be treated in the same way from one period to the next. So for instance, depreciation. Uh, I said when we went through depreciation, uh, we've got various methods we could use, as far as the exam is concerned, straight line or reducing balance. Well, we should do it the same way each year. We shouldn't keep changing. And also, though it isn't typed there, we should treat all similar items in the same way. You know, so if we have a hundred cars, we should depreciate all of them the same way. We shouldn't depreciate one car straight line and another car reducing balance. We treat all similar assets the same way. Uh, over the page, there's a long list there 
of what we call other accounting concepts and qualitative characteristics. Qualitative uh, means they're not numbers. You know, quantitative is when we talk about numbers. Qualitative uh, is not numbers. But let me run down and explain each briefly. Materiality. Material means big. And so if there are any big items, uh, should be disclosed separately. Now, there's no definition of the word big. Uh, it depends on very much on the size of the company. Uh, for my company, a thousand dollars is a big amount. Uh, for a big oil company, a thousand dollars is nothing. You know, hundred thousand would be a big amount. But when we say big items should be disclosed separately, um, think of irrecoverable, uh, irrecoverable debts. We may have uh, written off several irrecoverable debts this year. And they're all relatively small, $100 here, $200 there. That would just be included in our total expenses. But if there was one written off which was enormous, you know, uh, 100,000 irrecoverable, then, uh, again, it depends on the size of the company. If that's like to be big, it's material, you would make a separate note saying, that, you know, the expenses include one uh, irrecoverable of 100,000. Uh, relevance. Uh, the information in the uh, statement should be relevant to the people using them. That's all. Don't give lots of information just for the sake of it. But you're giving information that's relevant to the users. Uh, reliability. It's another qualitative one. In the different accountants, qualified accountants prepared accounts. People have a, a right to expect that they can rely on the accounts. The figures are accurate, they're truthful. Uh, faithful representation. A lot of these do overlap. It's something similar to what something I said on the first page. Um, that you are showing things in a way that's true, that's honest. You're not biased. You're not trying to hide figures to make things look better or worse than they actually are. Uh, substance over form. I'll give you an example of this. You won't be asked any numbers here, perhaps in later exams. But suppose I buy a machine. We need a machine to uh, produce whatever we're producing, and it costs 100,000. Well, of course, that machine appears on uh, my state of financial position as an asset. And if I borrow the money to buy it, there'll also be a liability for the money owing. Uh, suppose another identical business producing the same goods, they need the machine, and they've decided to lease it. So they don't buy the machine, they've leased it from somebody else, and they're having to pay, effectively, they're paying rent. So our two companies are absolutely identical. We've got the same machine. I bought it. I own it, it's a non-current asset. The other company hasn't bought it, they're leasing it. Well, we say, all right, in law, they don't own it. But in practice, they're using it just like I am. They're treating it as though they do own it. And so we should show the, the real position of something, substance, Substance, you show the, the, the actual effect. 
is much more important than the form, which is the legal position. And so, in fact, and you'll see how we actually do it in later exams, not in this one, but the company that's leasing the machine, the effect of it is it's just the same as though they own it, so they would show it as a uh, non-current asset, even though legally it's not owned by them at all. Uh, neutrality. Something I've said twice, in fact, it means no bias. The accountant, the qualified accountant, is neutral. They're not trying to show a better or worse position than actually occurs. Uh, prudence. Uh, prudence is another word for being cautious. You know, if um, you teach children to look both ways before they cross a road, we say you're being cautious, you're being prudent. Well, the relevance in uh, accounts is that we'd rather, well, sorry, start again. The relevance in financial statements is that we record any losses As soon as we become aware, uh, we only take profit when it's actually made, when actually realised. And a good example of this is the way we value inventory. Normally, we value inventory at lower of cost and net realizable value. So you know from the earlier lectures, if the inventory costs 100, if the selling price is 150, we value at 100. We're going to make a profit of 50, but we haven't yet sold the inventory, we haven't yet made the profit. Things could go wrong. And so we don't take the profit till it's sold, we value at the lower. However, if the inventory is damaged and we're only going to sell it for 80, we're going to lose money. We haven't lost money yet because we haven't sold it. It's an inventory. But as soon as we see there's likely to be a loss, then effectively we charge it. We value at the lower because we've seen that there's going to be a loss. But when it's the other way around, well again, we don't take credit for the profit. Even though we see there's going to be a profit, it might not be. We want to be prudent. We only value at cost. Uh, next one, uh, completeness. I think you have a right to assume that the uh, statements are complete, that everything has been dealt with. We've not left anything out. Uh, comparability. And you're aware that it's always uh, real financial statements. Uh, we show this year's figure, we show last year's figure alongside, so that can, people can compare the users can compare this year with last year. Are things better, are things worse, and so on. Uh, and finally, understandability. Whoa. Accountants, when they're preparing financial statements, should be thinking about the people using them and present things in a way that's easily understandable. You know, we assume that the users have a reasonable degree of financial knowledge. But subject to that, we don't start using long words and putting things in a funny layout and things. Our job as accountant is to present the statements, but to present the figures, but present them in a way 
where people with a reasonable level of uh, financial knowledge can understand the figures we're giving them. Uh, finally, uh, certainly for this lecture, finally, on the next page, what we call alternative valuation bases. Now, this is something slightly different, but it seemed a sensible chapter to put it in. And what are we talking about here? Is how we show non-current assets on the statement of financial position. And the way we show them, the way I went through in the earlier lectures, we always show non-current assets at cost less accumulated depreciation. I know occasionally we might revalue and things, but generally speaking, we show at original cost less accumulated depreciation. Now that's a standard way we do it, and that's called the historical cost approach. That's the way that we standardly show non-current assets the original cost less depreciation. Now university people, academics, have been saying for years that perhaps there are better ways that we should use. And the three below are the three different ways that have been suggested, which you never ever have to apply in this exam. But just be aware that people argue, oh, perhaps we should do differently. Because original cost less accumulated depreciation, of course, gets way out of date. It's not showing, I stress this when we did depreciation, it's not showing the true value of an asset. And what people have suggested, some people have suggested using replacement cost. And are saying, oh, if we've got a machine, what would be far more useful to users isn't to show, oh, that it cost us 10,000 20 years ago. More useful, perhaps, would be to show how much it would cost to buy a new one now. And I think you can see the argument. We don't do it, but that's one suggestion people have made. Uh, another is to show the realisable value. Though wouldn't it make more sense, instead of showing the original cost, less depreciation, wouldn't it make more sense to show how much we could sell it for? How much is it worth? We don't do it, but people have suggested that that would be perhaps even better. Uh, the third one, economic value. To do this would be really messy, you won't have to do this. But to say, ah, oh, we've got this machine, rather than show how much we originally paid for it, less depreciation, Let's show how much it's worth to us. Let's estimate how much this machine will earn us in the future. And let that determine a value. Some of you may have heard of discounting. You start discounting the future returns we expected. But if this machine was expected to earn us lots of money in the future, we'd value it highly. If this machine wasn't expected to earn very much, we'd value it lowly. Now, as I say, those have been three alternative suggestions that people argue might make the statements look better, more realistic. However, we don't, and be aware, we use a historical cost approach. Now, there are really two ways you can be asked about this. One way would just be a very simple one saying uh, what method of accounting do we use for non-current assets and give you a choice of those four well we use historical cost accounting um, the other question needs a tiny bit more thought 
Have a think about this. Suppose I asked you, in times of high inflation, Two things. The first one I think is reasonably obvious, but still. Using historical cost accounting, uh, the value in the statement of financial position Does historical cost accounting overvalue or undervalue in times of high inflation? Well, the value in the statement of financial position, is it likely to be too low or too high? Well, I think you should have thought uh, worked that one out. Surely it's likely to be too low, it's likely to undervalue. I bought a building 10 years ago for 10,000. There's been high inflation. It's, to buy the same building now, it costs an awful lot more, but we'll still only show 10,000 at less depreciation. So it's going to undervalue assets in the statement of financial position. What about the profit? Using historical cost accounting, will it result in our profit being too high or too low? Well, the effect on profit, it would overvalue the profit. And the reason is, we'll be charging, we'll have a depreciation expense each year, and with historical cost accounting, Depreciation will be based on the original cost. If there's high inflation, the same asset now will be worth a lot more. And if the value of the asset was a lot higher, the depreciation would be a lot higher. And so with the historical cost accounting, we're charging lower depreciation and a lower expense would result in higher profit. Jolly good.